Hey everybody, welcome to WASD20. My name is Nate, and today I'm going to be showing you how I prep a Reaper Bones miniature, and just the step of getting it ready for paint. I really like Reaper Bones miniatures. Uh, they are lightweight plastic miniatures. They're pretty good looking, and the main thing is they're cheap. In general, I think you're going to spend about two to three times more for a metal miniature than you would for one of these Reaper Bones. And again, these are really good looking for a plastic miniature. Now I should say that I don't claim to have the very best method for prepping these miniatures, but I think it's a very solid method uh, that is good enough for most people. And uh, some of the professionals out there would probably find some faults with it, but uh, it's a pretty good balance for me for my time and my money spent. The mold that I'm going to be painting today is a bugbear. It is 77015. Uh, it's in the Dark Heaven line of the Reaper Bones. All right, now let's start talking about the actual steps in prepping the miniature for paint. These are the steps that you're going to see laid out in more detail in the rest of the video. First, we're gonna open it up, that's important. Number two, get it clean and dry. Thirdly, we're going to affix the miniature to a base, and that's an optional step, but it's something that I like to do with my minis. Number four, don't skip this one, prime, very important. Number five, I usually mount my miniature on something else for better handling so my fingers don't get in the way, you'll see. And number six, we're going to give the miniature a quick dry brush to pull out some of the detail that you can't see otherwise so that we can more easily paint those details. Now the process of prepping a miniature is not very glamorous, but uh, it is a pretty important step even if you don't see any amazing results coming to life here. So without further ado, let's get going. So after taking the model out of the package, the first thing I'm going to do is wash it off. What I have here is a little bit of water with like two drops of dish soap in it. Uh, so not much, and then I've got a toothbrush that I use to scrub, but uh, you can use anything. You can even just let the miniature soak in the water. And then over here I've got some uh, rinse water as well in the background. And uh, I'm just gonna be washing this thing off. So why do we do this? Well, in the manufacturing process, uh, there is just bound to be some manufacturing residue, some factory residue, some oils, and whatever else. And uh, it's just a good idea to get it clean to make sure that the paint and primer sticks really well to the miniature. I'll even do this if I open the miniature and like let my kids play with it with their grubby little hands. I want to make sure I get that thing really, really clean so that the paint can stick pretty well. You might have okay luck skipping this step, um, and a lot of people don't do it. Uh, but I like to do everything I can to make sure the paint's going to stick good and increase my chances for a good looking miniature. So after you rinse the miniature, the next step is to dry them off. So I'm just swishing them around here in the rinse water and then I'm going to dry them off with a towel. Uh, so first I use a towel here and then you can see me getting in some of the uh, little areas where the water pools with a paper towel, just kind of dabbing it in there. And uh, you'd be surprised how many little pools gather in a miniature like this with a lot of detail. But honestly, one of the best ways to do this is just to let the thing dry overnight. Just set it in a dry place and let it dry. Uh, if you are really in a hurry though, I would recommend after doing this, using a hair blow dryer. Uh, that's really the only method I've found to get it completely dry. Uh, just make sure you don't have it too hot. Now, speaking of heat, one of the disadvantages to the Reaper Bones miniatures is that some of the parts are sometimes bent. Uh, you can see this club is just a little bit bent, and I can't tell if it's intended to be that way, but it doesn't bother me at all. I kind of like it. Uh, it's just got a little bit of a curve to it. I've had others that are really bad, though, where a sword, a very thin sword, is just bent and it looks really bad. So uh, there are ways to fix that. I recommend Googling it, uh, but basically it involves using some uh, boiling water and, uh, and being a little bit careful. One thing to note is I don't have to get this thing totally dry right now because I'm actually going to be basing this miniature before I prime it. So this miniature has a nice base, but a lot of people like to add a round base. And you can feel free to skip this step, you don't need that. But I like to add a base to my miniature uh, just to make it look a little better. And uh, this one right here that I'm holding is an actual miniature base that you can buy. I think these are probably somewhere around 50 to 75 cents a piece. And that's for a pretty small one, and this miniature won't even fit on this base. My preferred method is using fender washers. The whole box of 100 of these, I think I got for about 10 bucks, 10.50 it says on the box. 
So yeah, these are really great and I pre-primed a whole bunch of them uh, just with black primer and that's generally what I use. Now these ones also are a little too small so I've actually purchased some larger fender washers that I'm going to be using and those can get a little more pricey because I usually don't buy them in bulk. Uh, this one may have been, I don't know, a dollar, uh, 75 cents, something like that. So I do go with these usually because they save a bit of money and I also like the added weight that a metal washer provides. Uh, it's nice to have a little extra weight on a plastic miniature that's pretty lightweight, especially some weight on the bottom to keep the thing from tipping over very easily. In order to save money, I once tried to make these little clay bases, and it went okay. They didn't turn out that uniform or great, uh, but these work too. Sometimes I'll use these for like a uh, little goblin or kobold or something like that. Now to glue this guy to the base today, I'm going to be using some goop. Uh, this is just a pretty strong glue, uh, and you could use super glue, gorilla glue, crazy glue, but uh, I'll just put a couple of drops of this on the bottom of the miniature, and uh, then I will stick him to the base. So I let the thing sit and dry for about five minutes here, and then I came back, and with some regular PVA glue like Elmer's, I actually went around the base and uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm trying to ease the transition between the base on the, uh, the white base and the actual um, washer. And so you can kind of smooth that out and add some uh, PVA glue around and kind of mold that the way you want. And my initial gluing just kind of sticks pretty close to the existing base. Uh, but again, just trying to ease that transition. So I let it dry here and we can have a look and see. Uh, the glue is somewhat dry, and now I'm going to be adding a lot more glue and getting out that kitty litter. Yep, that's right, I'm using kitty litter to simulate the effect of gravel and rocks. Some people use other materials, you can use sand, you can use little rocks, there's all sorts of things, but I got some kitty litter from my neighbor. It is clean kitty litter, it is not used, uh, that's an important thing to note. And I'm actually going to kind of crush it to make it smaller because I want it to be a little more sandy, just a little more fine. So I spent another minute or so trying to crunch that down, but now I am covering the whole base in glue. And what I'm going to do is just kind of sprinkle that kitty litter on and uh, try to get it to stick there. And I won't show it all, but I uh, sprinkled it all and then I actually let it dry overnight and decided to build it up a little bit higher to ease that transition. So um, you're going to see here the final product after waking up the next day. Uh, here's about what it looked like with the kitty litter base. And now we finally come to the very important step of priming your miniature. In terms of primer today, I'm going to be using Krylon Color Master Primer. This is Cover Max Ultra Flat. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good stuff. It's just kind of standard, pretty inexpensive primer. It's nothing fancy, nothing specific to miniatures, but I find it does the job just well enough. And uh, yeah, just make sure you shake it really well, because if you don't shake it, you can get some clumps and drips, and uh, you want it to go on nice and thin and smooth. That's the goal here. Uh, you can use black. Uh, I often use gray as well, and once in a while I will use white if I know I'm going to be painting it very light colors. Okay, back to the shaking. Seriously, folks, you want to shake this stuff for like two minutes. Like, set a timer, because you really want to make sure it's nice and thin. You don't want to ruin your miniature with big clumpy drips. All right, and now we get down to the actual priming. So I'm in a well-ventilated area. I am outdoors in my backyard. I've got a nice board that my wife painted some uh, curtain rods on. And uh, I'm going to be doing nice, even, short passes over the miniature. And I'm going to be shaking frequently in between these passes. Uh, one thing you want to do is make sure that you are about a foot away uh, from your miniature. Some people do even further than that. Sometimes I'll even get a little closer and go 10 inches, but probably not recommended. Uh, so I'm doing nice thin passes, and when I want to rotate, I grab it by the base so as not to smudge the miniature, or you can just rotate the entire board, or sometimes cardboard is what people use. But uh, this really is an exercise in patience because I'm not making a ton of progress all at once. It's just little tiny bit by bit, and sometimes I, you know, get, get, get in there and get a close look at it, make sure I'm not getting any drips, 
If so, you can always wipe it off and kind of start over. But um, yeah, you want to be very careful and uh, just keep on doing it. Sometimes you get a little coat on there and then you maybe come back five minutes later, let that dry a little bit and uh, just keep on going. So I will speed through the rest of the spray painting because I think you get the idea, but I just keep on rotating. Eventually I turn them over on the other side and eventually turn them right side up and just trying to get as much coverage as I can and uh, when in need, leaving it dry for a few minutes and coming back. One important thing to note is I'm doing this in the shade in the grass on a nice 82 degree day. The other day I did it on a day that was closer to 90 degrees and I did it in the driveway and it was just too hot so my primer dried with a very fuzzy finish and it was a little bit tacky to the touch. All right, so here we are, primed and ready to go. You can see that there are still some white areas that didn't get fully filled in with primer, but that's okay. Uh, what I often do then is just come back with some black paint and uh, try to get that in all the cracks and just make sure that the whole thing is completely covered in a nice, nice dark black base. And there are basically two things left that I usually do. One of them is cover the kitty litter in some watered down PVA glue. Uh, and the last thing that I often do is give the whole miniature a good dry brush to kind of pick out the detail to make it easier to paint. So here you can see the kitty litter is, some of it's come up already, so I'm gonna be covering it in a watered down glue solution of one part Elmer's glue and maybe four parts water. And I'm not using one of my good brushes here, uh, just kind of a crappy old brush, and I'm very lightly brushing it on because I don't want to disturb the kitty litter more than I have to and knock more of it off. So I'm just going to cover this. I think I did two coats here all said and done, and uh, that's going to help that kitty litter stick. Paint works too. The primer helps a little bit, but uh, the glue really does the trick. A clear finish can also do the trick if you'd rather try that. I have dull coat lacquer or this gloss varnish. Uh, some people use that instead, but I just use the glue. So as we're waiting for the glue to dry here, I thought I would also mention that uh, I like to mount my miniatures, as you noticed, on things to make them easier to hold. So this right here is a organic baby food jar, and uh, it works pretty well for a miniature this size. I just hold it there with some poster putty, and I couldn't find my stash of poster putty, so I've only got a little bit holding it there. Uh, ideally, I would have more. But I highly recommend finding something around the house to do this with because it just makes it a whole lot easier to paint the miniature uh, when your fingers aren't getting in the way. And you really can use anything. Here's a lid from my kids' bubbles that uh, would do just fine. It doesn't give you quite as much to grab onto, but it would do. It would help. Uh, another thing I have around here is an old uh, craft paint lid. And I've got a few of these around from old dried out craft paints that work really well to hold a miniature. I've also seen some people use wine corks. So yeah, really, just anything around the house that you can find would help a lot. All right, now the last step in my prep process is a light dry brush over the entire miniature with a lighter color, uh, just to help lift out the details of the miniature so I can see them better and better plan what I'm gonna paint. It just makes sure I'm not gonna miss any little buckles or straps or pouches, and uh, it's really helpful. So I'm mixing a light gray, and I just need something that's a little bit lighter than my base color, uh, so I don't need to go bright white here. I don't wanna brighten it too much and create too much contrast, just enough to pick out the colors. So I'm really shoving my brush down into this gray. I'm using a really crappy old brush. It, doesn't, it should not be a good one because you're just gonna be shoving this thing around a lot. And uh, after you load it up, then you dab it on the paper towel. Paper towel works best in my opinion. And uh, just kinda try to get a lot of the paint out so that you're left with a light bit of paint throughout the entire brush. And in hindsight, I probably didn't get quite enough paint out of this brush. I think I had a little too much left in it. Uh, but it did the job okay and uh, it doesn't need to matter too much because this is all going to be covered up later. So now I just take the miniature and I lightly brush over the surface of the entire thing and I just spend a couple minutes just kind of making sure I'm hitting all the raised edges and again that just makes the detail of the miniature a little more evident. With a dry brush you are not painting the whole thing, you're just painting lightly those raised edges 
and it makes the details more evident. Uh, we can get into more detail in the process maybe in another video in the future in terms of uh, how dry brushing can be good for the, the final look of your miniature. But again, this is just in my prep process to, uh, to lift out the details. It's all going to be covered up later. I'll go ahead and speed through the rest of the dry brushing here and uh, we'll take a look at the finished product. And there we have it. The miniature is now dry brushed and you can see a lot of the detail that you couldn't see before. Um, and yeah, it's just, again, something that I find very helpful when I'm actually trying to plan out what I'm gonna paint and how, what order I'm gonna paint things and what colors. Uh, it really helps to be able to see all the little details and to know what you're getting into. One final thing that I will often do with prep is try to get rid of the mold lines on a miniature. And ideally, you would do this before priming, but I always find them so hard to see before priming. I can't really notice them until after I've painted and sometimes until after I've dry brushed. And so what you wanna do is sometimes just take a hobby file or maybe an exacto knife or even some very fine sandpaper and try to remove those mold lines. You can see them on the miniature right here. And uh, here's an older one that I did last week, and you can see some uh, pretty prominent mold lines there where the molds were pressed together. All right, well, that about does it for this one, how to prep a Reaper Bones miniature, or at least how I do it. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it useful, and I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Let me know if you have any thoughts, suggestions, tips, or uh, questions, just leave them down in the comments. And uh, hopefully I'll get around to recording a video of me actually painting this guy sometime soon. All right, that's all everybody. Take care, happy gaming, and you'll see me again very soon. Uh, the name is Bartholomew Bugbear. Make sure you like this video, share it with all your friends, and subscribe to WASD20, or I may have to climb off of this jar of organic baby food and bash your skull in. Thank you.